Have you ever felt like you're not living up to your full potential? Like there's an untapped well of intelligence waiting to be unlocked inside you? Well, prepare yourself, because the ancient philosophy of Stoicism is about to change the game. You see, the Stoics, who were ancient Greek and Roman philosophers, were experts at self-improvement and enhancing the mind. And their techniques for sharpening focus, deepening wisdom, and turbocharging your brain's performance are just as potent today as they were over 2,000 years ago. Imagine having laser-like mental clarity to demolish any challenge. Imagine being able to calmly dissect arguments from every angle, seeing profound truths others miss. Imagine commanding any room with poise and persuasive powers of pure cultivated intelligence. That's the edge the timeless principles of Stoicism can give you. Not just loading up on trivial facts, but developing profound depths of discernment, nuance, and higher reasoning. Unlocking your full potential as a modern polymath and unstoppable force. In this video, I'll share 11 of the most indispensable Stoic strategies for making your brain power operate on an entirely new level. Techniques like embracing uncertainty, asking incisive questions, true listening, strategic silence, and more. We'll break down concrete ways to implement each of these ancient methods from scratch and explore the core Stoic ideals around cultivating virtue and wisdom that turned these thinkers into intellectual greats. So get ready to see reality with crystal clear perception, to obliterate your blind spots and rampant cognitive biases, to outclass, outthink, and straight up outsmart everyone around you, all while embodying the highest ideals of disciplined human intelligence. The Stoics knew how to actualize untapped levels of mental performance, now it's your turn to follow their path to enshrined intellectual mastery. In the words of the great Stoic philosopher Seneca, as long as you live, keep learning how to live. Now remember, this is not just a passive viewing experience, it's an interactive experience and we invite you to actively participate, sharing your perspectives. Stay with us to the end, as this journey promises not just knowledge, but an opportunity for deep self-reflection and transformation. Let's begin. Technique one, embrace not knowing. One of the most empowering mindsets from the ancient Stoics is the art of embracing the unknown. That's right. Admitting ignorance can actually enhance your intelligence. Chrysippus of Soli, once of the founding fathers of Stoicism once said, the first step towards knowledge is admitting your ignorance. Think about it. No single person can possibly know everything about this vast complex universe. Even the top experts in any field will tell you how much is still a mystery to them. The scope of knowledge is literally infinite when you consider all the subjects across science, history, philosophy, and culture. The wisest people don't pretend to be all-knowing. Instead, they stay humble and curious, eager to keep learning more. They understand that for every new fact they learn, a thousand more questions pop up. True wisdom grows from acknowledging how much remains unknown. Arrogantly acting like you have everything figured out is just delusion and closes your mind off. The Stoics taught that real confidence comes from being grounded in what you understand while remaining open to what you still have to learn. When you embrace your ignorance in certain areas, you free your mind to be more receptive to new information and perspectives. You aren't stubbornly clinging to assumptions, but flexibly updating your views based on better ideas that come along. You practice intellectual humility rather than false pride. History is filled with examples of arrogant people claiming they had absolute truth, only to be proven disastrously wrong later. Embracing not knowing protects you from such poor decisions based on misguided ego and pride. It keeps you endlessly curious and hungry to keep expanding your wisdom. The Stoics saw openly saying, I don't know, as a sign of intelligence and self-awareness. It means you honestly recognize the limits of your knowledge amid the vastness of what's unknowable. Pretending you know everything is pure folly. So how can you start embracing this mindset? First, develop healthy self-awareness about the inevitable gaps and blind spots in your own knowledge and perspectives. We all have them, few take time to identify their own. Next, cultivate intellectual humility. Be secure enough to change your mind when compelling new information surfaces. Be willing to admit when you don't have all the answers on something. Finally, Constantly seek out new learning opportunities across diverse subjects and from contrarian thinkers. Read books that challenge your beliefs, travel to expand your horizons, 
and discuss ideas with people of radically different backgrounds. Let go of certainties and lean into curiosity about the unknown. Embracing not knowing doesn't mean wallowing in ignorance. It means peeling back ego and arrogance to see reality as it truly is. A vast mystery we're always uncovering more about. As the Stoics taught, this open-minded wisdom allows your intelligence to flourish endlessly. Don't be afraid of the unknown. Dive in. Technique 2. Prefer curiosity over judgment. Have you ever immediately dismissed someone's ideas or opinions just because they didn't match your existing beliefs? Maybe it was a political view you strongly disagreed with or an ethical stance that seemed totally misguided to you. In those moments, it's really tempting to just write that person off as an idiot and completely disregard what they're saying. But here's the thing. The ancient Stoics understood well. That knee-jerk judgmental reaction actually blocks you from thinking intelligently. When you instantly condemn ideas that contradict your own, you close yourself off from potential wisdom and truth. Your ego and assumptions prevent your mind from growing and evolving. The smarter approach? Get curious about that different perspective instead of harshly judging it. You see, curiosity is like a magic key that unlocks greater understanding. When you explore an opposing viewpoint with an inquisitive, humble mindset rather than dismissing it outright, you open yourself up to insights you may have been blind to before. You expose potential blind spots in your own thinking. Instead of shutting the person down, think to yourself, hmm, that's an interesting point. Help me understand why you see it that way. Then actively listen with an open mind as they explain their reasoning. Ask follow-up questions to grasp their perspective more deeply. Through this approach, you'll gain a more nuanced understanding that expands your own viewpoint, even if you still disagree on some things. And through your curious back-and-forth discussion, you'll identify problems or mistakes in their logic that reinforce why you disagree. Either way, your mind stays active and open rather than rigid and closed off. As Marcus Aurelius said, our mental well-being is elevated when we engage ideas curiously rather than shut them out due to misaligned assumptions. Now, this doesn't mean you have to endlessly entertain every crazy idea or viewpoint. The Stoics emphasized using rational discernment, but when you do encounter perspectives that seem deeply flawed or misguided to you, don't immediately dismiss them out of hand. Get curious first. Try to genuinely understand where that person is coming from. You may end up changing their mind or strengthening your own stance through hearty discourse. See differing ideas as opportunities for intellectual growth, not threats to be defensive towards. The truth is, none of us has a monopoly on truth and knowledge. We all have blind spots that can be uncovered through openly engaging with other worldviews and belief systems, even if we ultimately disagree with them. So stay curious rather than judgmental. Ask questions from a place of genuine interest, not interrogation. Listen intently before passing judgment. You may be surprised how much wiser and grounded your perspective becomes through the process of entertained curiosity. Technique number three, practice active listening. We've all been in conversations where the other person seems checked out, just nodding along but not really listening. It's frustrating feeling like you're talking to a brick wall. Well, the ancient Stoics would have some blunt wisdom for that type of person. Practice active listening. Unlike just passively hearing words, active listening requires focused attention and intention. An active listener stays fully present and engaged, making eye contact and clearing their mind of distractions. They don't just absorb the literal words, but aim to understand the full meaning, emotion, and context behind what's being communicated. And crucially, an active listener is always looking for opportunities to dig deeper through well-timed questions. They separate what's being literally said from what's actually meant, peeling back layers to get to the core of someone's perspective. The Stoics considered this deep intention to truly understand others as vital for effective communication, learning, and cultivating wisdom. It's about getting immersed in the person's viewpoint rather than just projecting your own assumptions. After all, as former slave and Stoic sage Epictetus said, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Now, mastering active listening takes real practice. You have to build the mental discipline to stay present, get comfortable with silence, and watch for those chances to ask questions that reveal more nuance. But the payoffs are massive. Stronger relationships, clearer understanding, 
and accelerated personal growth. So be an active listener. Push aside inner chatter and make space to soak in every facet of the communication happening. That's the path to joining the ranks of the Stoics as a true astute listener. Technique number four, practice mindful observation. In our busy, distracted world, it's easy to go through life on autopilot, not truly seeing and experiencing the richness around us. Our minds are so preoccupied with thoughts and worries that we fail to stay present in the moment. The ancient Stoics had an antidote for this inattention, the practice of mindful observation. This means clearing your mind of clutter so you can fully absorb your surroundings with focused intention. The Stoics saw this present moment awareness as a path to deeper wisdom and understanding of reality. When you're stuck in your head ruminating, you shut off information that could be expanding your intelligence. But by practicing mindful observation, you become hyper aware of subtle details, context clues, and deeper truths your oblivious mind would normally miss. Your ability to gather intelligence skyrockets. Observing mindfully allows you to truly listen to others' words, tones, and body language rather than spacing out. It helps you solve problems by taking in fresh perspectives. It unlocks novel insights and ideas by allowing new observations to reshape your thinking. To develop this skill, work on being present through meditation, breath work, or setting reminders. When conversing, consciously observe body language and context, not just words. When problem solving, pause to absorb your environment anew. Avoid quick judgments. Let perceptions pass before analyzing them. It takes effort, but mindful observation massively upgrades your intelligence. You absorb more nuance, context, and perspectives by being a witness, not a daydreamer. Like the Stoics taught, presence and observation are gateways to profound wisdom. Technique number five, become an expert at something. Have you ever been awed by someone who just seems to operate on a whole different level of depth and insight about a particular topic? That's the power of true expertise. The ancient Stoics understood that gaining mastery over a specific subject was a pathway to heightened intelligence. While they valued being well-rounded, they also advocated drilling down to an expert level on certain topics. Achieving commanding proficiency in a discipline trains your mind to think in more rigorous, nuanced ways. Just imagine discussing the Civil War with someone who has only basic facts versus a devoted scholar who has studied it from every conceivable angle for decades. The scholar can see the topic with far richer clarity, insight, and cognitive horsepower. The Stoics revered this type of profound expertise as a means of cultivating intellectual potential to its fullest. To get there yourself, first pick a knowledge area or skill you have natural curiosity about. That hunger will sustain you. Then immerse yourself fully, read extensively, study emerging research, listen to expert lectures, find mentors. Never stop experimenting and challenging your understanding through hands-on application. Consistently reality check your knowledge to overcome blind spots. Poke holes in your mastery regularly through rigorous stress testing. Be patient as true expertise is a journey of decades, not months. Commit to the lifelong process of steadily compounding your comprehension in that realm. Over time, you'll unlock richer dimensions of clarity and insight that elevate your intelligence. You'll develop cognitive flexibility to connect ideas in novel ways. Pursuing profound expertise honors the stoic ideals of actualizing human potential. It exercises your capacity for deeper wisdom beyond just facts. In the wise words of Seneca, it is not enough to have a good mind. The main thing is to use it well. Technique number six, sharpen your memory. Having a sharp memory is like having a powerful search engine in your brain. It allows you to quickly access valuable information, make connections between ideas, and build upon your existing knowledge more effectively. The ancient Stoics were well aware of the immense value of a strong memory for fueling intelligence. After all, what good is acquiring wisdom and understanding if you're just going to let it leak right back out of your mind again? The Stoics viewed memory as a vital tool for retaining insights, recalling important lessons from the past and compounding one's cultivation of perspective over time. Imagine trying to master a subject like philosophy, history, or the natural sciences if you couldn't remember even a fraction of what you read or learned previously. You'd be stuck having to continually relearn the basics rather than spiraling ever deeper into true comprehension. 
an inefficient use of the mind's potential, to say the least. That's why the Stoics place such emphasis on using time-tested memorization methods and strategies to fortify their recall abilities. From repeating lessons out loud to creating vivid mental imagery to routinely reviewing core principles, they proactively trained their memories as any elite thinker and truth seeker should. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, sure, having a great memory sounds terrific, but isn't that just something you're naturally gifted with or not? Like having a photographic memory is just lucky genes, right? Well, here's the reality. While some people may start off with more innate memory abilities, steely recall is absolutely a skill that can be intentionally developed and sharpened over time, just like building physical muscle. It's a matter of leveraging certain practices and mental habits to fortify your brain's memory-making mechanisms. The first step is to become an active learner rather than a passive one. When you're trying to commit new information or concepts to memory, engage with the material actively. Ask yourself questions, create vivid mental visualizations, and try to forge connections between what you're learning and what you already know. This vastly increases encoding and memory retention. Next, try implementing some of those classic memorization tactics that have stood the test of time. From acronyms to memory palaces to repeating key points out loud, Find a system that resonates best with how your own mind operates. Setting up rhythms and patterns makes it easier for your brain to catalog and store information effectively. It's also crucial to review, refresh, and reinforce the important nuggets of wisdom you've worked so hard to cement into your memory reserves. Schedule regular revisiting of your notes, books, or other memory stimulators. Create routines and habits around keeping those neurons firing in a way that solidifies long-term recall rather than letting valuable learning leak away into the ether. Another helpful technique is to put extra effort into vividly reliving your memories and imprinting the emotional context around how you learned certain ideas. The more senses and feelings you can associate with a piece of information, the stickier it tends to become in your brain's storage banks. For instance, vividly remember where you were, what you were doing, how you felt, even what sounds and smells were present when a particular concept or lesson crystallized in your mind. That multi-sensory encoding makes it far more retrievable down the road. Sleep is another vital ally for any would-be memory wizard. While you're snoozing, your brain is hard at work processing and consolidating everything you've fed it recently into more efficient and cohesive neural networks. So be sure to get those seven to nine hours regularly. It's an invaluable maintenance routine for keeping your mind's storage and retrieval capabilities running in peak condition. Finally, keep challenging your brain with new learning skills and experiences. The more novelty you expose your mind to and then work to fully absorb, the more you'll be strengthening your overall memory resilience. It's like doing cross-training for your memory muscles rather than just maxing out on one domain of knowledge. The beautiful paradox is that by consistently implementing habits and routines around fortifying your memory reserves, You'll find your capacity to learn and accumulate new wisdom will expand dramatically over time. Knowledge builds upon knowledge, and your mind will get more adept at making new connections while retrieving valuable context from your ever-deepening well of recalls. So take a page from the Stoics and get serious about leveling up your memory skills as a potent tool for fueling your intelligence. Embrace active learning, rather than passively consuming information. Implement time-tested memorization tactics that sync with your brain's tendencies. Prioritize consistent review, vivid reliving of memories, ample sleep, and continuous novelty exposure. By treating your memory as something to intentionally develop and maintain, rather than leaving it to chance, you'll steadily transform it into a finely honed asset. One that empowers your mind to operate at its full potential as a supple, nuanced, and increasingly wise intelligence just as those ancient Stoics knew it could. Technique 7. Use critical thinking. In our modern world of social media rants, polarizing political debates and online echo chambers, it's more crucial than ever to cultivate the skill of critical thinking. You see, it's remarkably easy for all of us to get seduced by emotional arguments, slick rhetoric, or facts taken out of context to confirm our existing beliefs. Before we know it, we're trapped in lazy mental patterns and flawed assumptions rather than genuinely evaluating issues and perspectives through a more discerning lens. We become dogmatic, narrow-minded, and susceptible to manipulation by bad faith actors peddling truths 
tailored to push our buttons. The ancient Stoics wouldn't stand for this kind of sloppy, low-resolution thinking. For them, exercising robust critical thinking skills was an essential intellectual virtue for perceiving reality accurately and making wise choices. It was a way to cut through deception, overcome innate human biases and cultivate nuanced understanding. At its core, critical thinking is about analyzing information, arguments, and situations through pragmatic logic and impartial reasoning, rather than just accepting things at face value based on gut reactions or pre-existing narratives. It requires stepping outside your own mental frames to explore other perspectives and scrutinize claims through a more objective, facts-based lens. Think of it like being a fanatical fact-checker or investigative journalist. You aren't just passively swallowing assertions, you're aggressively verifying their veracity and considering the full context before deciding what to accept as true or reasonable. So how can you start implementing this decidedly unlazy approach to thinking and evaluating the world around you? Well, the first step is to get real with yourself about your own biases and blind spots. We all have them based on our upbringings, backgrounds, personal experiences, and psychological tendencies. The more cognizant you can become about where your natural leanings and mental distortions exist, the easier it becomes to counteract them through disciplined critical thinking. You can effectively put checks and balances in place before lazily slipping into flawed assumptions or up-is-down conclusions. Next, get into the habit of interrogating the sources behind any claims or arguments you encounter. Investigate the credibility of where certain information and rhetoric is stemming from. Identify potential agendas, biases, or vested interests at play. Verify whether facts are being presented completely, partially, or stripped of essential context. Evaluate the logic and reason being applied. Does the argument hold up under scrutiny? Does it make logical sense based on established facts and realities? Or does it contain glaring holes, contradictions, or wild leaps of poor reasoning? Be assertive about poking at any apparent weaknesses until they either hold up or collapse under inspection. It's also vital to get adept at identifying and avoiding the most common logical fallacies that frequently pollute public discourse and skew our ability to think clearly. Hasty generalizations, appeals to emotion over evidence, false dichotomies, ad hominem attacks, slippery slopes. These are all patterns of flawed logic to be on high alert for. And whenever you do feel a strong emotional reaction to a claim or argument, be highly skeptical. That's often a blazing red flag that your biases are being triggered or that someone is attempting to manipulate you through rhetorical trickery. Lean into rationality and objectivity rather than letting your heat of the moment feelings call the shots. Finally, always be willing to change your mind when compelling new information or stronger arguments present themselves. Having firm beliefs is one thing. Being rigid and inflexible when reason demands you update or alter those beliefs is just a failure of intellectual honesty. The Stoics were incredibly stern about rooting out this tendency for ego-clinging rigidity. Ultimately, what critical thinking cultivates is a personal commitment to seeing reality as accurately as possible. It's about separating fact from fiction, truth from deception, and rationality from emotionality in how you evaluate situations and information. It creates mental fortitude against letting flaws in your own thinking or sophistry from others pull you into delusion. Does this all require more mental effort than just lazily accepting the first plausible sounding argument that confirms your existing assumptions? Absolutely, and that's exactly the point. Critical thinking is a strenuously active process rather than a passive one. You have to work at seeing past your own blind spots while scrutinizing claims from all angles. But the payoff is invaluable. Nuanced understanding, wisdom grounded in realities rather than fictions, and the ability to make consistently intelligent choices. These are the rewards of taking the Stoics' call for disciplined critical thinking to heart. It's no longer an optional skill, but a vital one for making sense of our complex, often confusing modern world. So stay skeptical, keep probing, and exercise that mental muscle of critical analysis each and every day. The truth and your own smart decision-making abilities will be much better for it in the long run. Technique number eight, master the basics of rhetoric and negotiation. Whether you're trying to get a raise from your boss, settle an argument with your spouse, or push a creative project through at work, there's one skill that can give you a huge advantage, mastering the basics of rhetoric and negotiation. 
You see, the ancient Stoics weren't just philosophizing in ivory towers. Many of them were influential statesmen, orators, and lawyers who had to use the art of persuasion on a daily basis. They saw rhetorical ability as not just a means to an end, but a virtue tied to effective communication, emotional intelligence, and even moral reasoning. At its core, rhetoric is about deliberately selecting the right language, arguments, and techniques to effectively convey your message and motivate a particular response from your audience. It's about crafting a persuasive case rather than just vomiting up a disorganized word salad that falls on deaf ears. The Stoics excelled at this by understanding how to leverage logic, credibility, and strategic appeals to make their arguments as airtight and impactful as possible. They didn't resort to cheap manipulation tactics. They strived to make genuinely good faith, reasoned cases in an ethical manner. On the negotiation side, they recognized that aligning differing interests through compromise is often the optimal solution compared to just digging in heels in a stubborn deadlock. It's about finding creative ways to make sure all parties walk away feeling like their core needs were accounted for. To master these arts for yourself, start by working on your ability to see things from multiple perspectives. Put yourself in the shoes of whoever you need to communicate with or negotiate against. What are their motivations, concerns, desired outcomes? How can you validate those and address potential objections head on? Next, always be sure to establish personal credibility and make it clear you have the evidence and rationale to back up your stance. If there are gaps in your knowledge or flaws in your logic, concede those up front. The Stoics taught that maintaining integrity is crucial for persuasive power. Deception or overconfident bluster will only undermine you in the long run. When it comes to the negotiation process itself, one of the most powerful tactics is to ask a ton of clarifying questions up front to uncover all parties' key interests and motivations. Too often we make faulty assumptions or get fixated on surface-level positions when there may actually be deeper layers to account for. Also make liberal use of pleasantly stubborn tactics like, that's okay, I understand, but, or what if we looked at this another way? Don't accept no for an answer right away if you feel the objections can be overcome. Kill them with respectful persistence cloaked in curious inquisition. It's also crucial to master subtle turns of phrase and language framing that can stealthily anchor certain ways of thinking for your counterparts. For example, using hypothetical language up front like, let's say we did it this way, can implant the implication of an assumed agreement. Little tactics like that can massively grease the wheels during tense negotiations. Additionally, always try to reframe objections and implied rejections as mere temporary obstacles rather than permanent sticking points. I hear your concern about tight deadline and I think we can find a way to resolve that. Rather than taking no for an answer, stay focused on driving things forward constructively. Whenever you spot areas where you agree, make those stand out to strengthen your common ground. Start with these agreements to build a sense of unity before moving on to tackle the tougher disagreements carefully. Lastly, learn to artfully leverage silence as a tool in your negotiations and rhetorical arsenals. Don't feel obligated to instantly react after someone objects or floats a proposal. Make them sweat it out while you carefully consider your response. The empty space will heighten their urgency to find a resolution. At the end of the day, skilled rhetoric and negotiation isn't about dishonest manipulation or trickery that the Stoics would scoff at. It's about effectively breaking down barriers of communication, resolving conflicts, and aligning interests through polished persuasive techniques. Think of it as Aikido for conversational challenges. Maintaining poise and redirecting incoming forces for productive resolutions rather than butting heads in a stalemate. So study up on these timeless philosophies for navigating disagreements through acute emotional intelligence and crafted language. Who knows? You might just find yourself calmly diffusing toxic arguments at work or negotiating a dream deal for yourself simply by embodying stoic-inspired mastery of persuasion. That's a very worthwhile intelligence to cultivate for the modern age. Technique number nine, use silence to your advantage. In our modern world of constant noise and endless chatter, being able to strategically wield silence has become a severely underrated skill. The ancient Stoics, however, were way ahead of the game on this one. They saw judicious use of silence not just as a practical tool, 
but as a virtue tied to self-control, thoughtfulness, and even sacred wisdom. You see, the Stoics understood that constantly running your mouth and feeling compelled to always have some quippy response at the ready is often just an ego-driven demonstration of insecurity and poor discipline. The truly self-possessed individual has the confidence to let silence do some of the heavy lifting for them. By staying quiet at certain crucial moments, you inherently become more present, aware and attuned to the nuances of whatever situation you're in. You start picking up on subtle cues, subtext, and opportunities for more impactful speech that you'd otherwise trample over in an endless wordy barrage. Silence creates intentional pauses for you to gather your thoughts, choose your words carefully, and respond with greater mindfulness. It's a powerful forced break from just unconsciously regurgitating the first thing that pops into your head without true reflection. In conversations and communication, strategic silence allows you to truly listen to the other person without constant mental calculations about what you'll say next drowning them out. It signals that you're weighing their perspective respectfully before formulating any reaction. During negotiations or conflicts, judiciously slowing the cadence down and using dense moments of silence can completely shift the dynamic in your favor. It puts the onus back on the other party to break the awkward lull often causing them to fill the void sloppily and give up ground. Even in public speaking or presentations, long pregnant pauses can be incredibly engaging when deployed at the right moments. They build anticipation and emphasis, allowing your words to take on more weight and gravitas when you do choose to punctuate the silence. Moreover, the Stoics saw silence as a means of maintaining calm and steady temperance, one of their core virtues for living a life of tranquility and self-mastery. By biting your tongue instead of blurting out every little thought, you avoid stoking the fires of unnecessary conflict and reactivity. At its essence, silence promotes focus, consideration, intellectual restraint, and being a truly conscious presence rather than a mindless stream of uncontrolled word vomit. Those are invaluable assets for anybody looking to elevate their mindfulness and capacity for intelligent conduct. So how can you start reaping the benefits of this underrated skill? Well, start paying closer attention to how much you may unconsciously run your mouth just to fill silence for its own sake. Notice when you tend to rapidly respond to people without truly digesting their words and intent first. Then make a conscious effort to create more intermittent pauses and quiet moments in your days, conversations, and routines. Get comfortable with the building tension of prolonged silence and make a practice of sitting with it rather than desperately rushing to diffuse it. You can also try speaking more slowly and deliberately, allowing your words to breathe between sentences. Really concentrate on what you're saying, almost like giving a speech. It may feel awkward and uncomfortable at first, sure, but stick with it and you'll quickly start seeing the power and wisdom in flexing this uniquely human ability for silent restraint, one that the Stoics have been singing the praises of for thousands of years already. As the old saying goes, silence is golden. With a little practice, you'll understand exactly why lucid quiet is such a prized and precious asset for intelligence and thoughtful living. It's time to embrace the pause. Technique number 10, use reverse psychology. When it comes to getting what you want out of others, sometimes a direct approach just doesn't quite do the trick. That's where the time-honored tactic of reverse psychology can come in extremely handy. And the ancient Stoics were definitely hip to utilizing this subtle mind game from time to time. Now, reverse psychology isn't about deception or manipulation for manipulation's sake. That would go against Stoic virtues of integrity and ethical conduct. It's about artfully presenting a certain frame to someone that naturally piques their insecurities or contrariness, prompting them to react by doing what you actually hoped they'd do all along. The genius lies in appealing to someone's knee-jerk need to assert their autonomy and resist overt persuasion attempts. By cloaking your true intentions and backing them into a psychological corner of sorts, you increase the likelihood they'll choose the desired course of action through their own free will. It's a subtle art of psychological jujitsu where you're leveraging someone's own mental reactance tendencies as a force in your favor, rather than just trying to bulldoze through with direct demands or authority. For example, let's say you're trying to encourage a friend to start eating healthier, but you know they'll immediately resist if you just bark orders at them. With reverse psychology, you might say something like, you know, with how unmotivated you are, you'll probably just keep eating junk and being unhealthy forever. 
By presenting an unflattering defeatist perspective of their current situation, you're essentially challenging their self-belief and pride, which often prompts people to unconsciously course correct in the opposite direction you predicted. Bam, they're actively pursuing better habits to prove you wrong. Or in a work situation, maybe you need someone's buy-in on executing a certain important project, but they're digging their heels in pessimistically. You could try saying something like, you're probably right, this is way too complex to pull off effectively. We should just scrap the whole idea and move on. Again, you're framing it as if you agree abandoning the project is the easier path. Planting a seed they'll naturally want to rebel against to prove their competence. It's a bit of a mind trick, sure, but one that operates by appealing to fundamental human psychology rather than deception or coercion. When executed tastefully and judiciously, Reverse psychology can be an extremely effective tool for leadership, motivation, and persuasion. Obviously, reading the room and using this tactic only in certain low-stakes situations is key. Attempting to reverse psychology. Someone who is in the midst of severe stress, anger, or impaired judgment would be unethical and foolish. It's best applied between two rational actors as a subtle nudge, not as a form of manipulation under heated circumstances. Additionally, the Stoics would caution against overusing or coming to rely too heavily on this persuasive approach. Being overly manipulative or game-playing even in seemingly innocuous ways can corrode one's sense of virtue over time and breed an excessive ring of deceptiveness that damages credibility. As with all things, balance and natural moderation is needed. But when utilized judiciously and with ethical restraint, reverse psychology can absolutely be a clever little technique in your arsenal for nudging people in productivity productive directions while still preserving their sense of autonomous decision making. It's a tactic that respects human nature's contrarian spirit by not attempting to crush it head on, but to redirect it with finesse. So keep an eye out for those situations where traditional persuasion just isn't proving effective. By using the high road of reverse psychology, you just may find that you effortlessly encourage people to talk themselves into the very outcome you were hoping for all along simply by honoring their inner psychological rebel. Technique number 11, practice focus. In our modern world of constant distractions and digital overwhelm, the ability to truly focus has become an increasingly rare and valuable superpower. We're so accustomed to letting our attention flit from one thing to the next like drunken butterflies that sustaining single-pointed concentration for any length of time feels unnatural. The ancient Stoics, however, placed tremendous emphasis on cultivating focused attention as a core virtue, essential for living an intelligent, self-actualized life. To them, an untrained mind was like a runaway stallion, powerful, but ultimately unharnessed and ineffective, without steely powers of concentration. You see, the Stoics believed that when you can successfully rein in your mental energies to zero in on one task or line of thinking with intentional focus, you start operating at a higher level of clarity, productivity, and even psychological well-being. Surface-level distractions and trivialities stop gumming up the works, allowing you to drill down into deeper layers of truth, nuance, and understanding. Modern psychology backs this up, showing that focused attention lets you activate more working memory, fully leverage your cognitive abilities, and quite literally upgrade your fluid intelligence in the moment. It's like installing a boldly powerful processor in your brain that can handle more complexity and insight. By contrast, when your mind is constantly ping-ponging between multiple stimuli, obligations, worries, and inputs, you're essentially bottlenecking your own potential. You remain stuck processing life through a pinhole rather than operating with the full breadth and depth of your remarkable mind. So how can we start taking a page from the Stoics and optimizing our powers of concentration? Well. Start by recognizing all the little attention leaks that tend to drain your focus reserves each day. Chronically checking your phone, switching Mejdu apps and browser tabs, channeling surfing. All those restless habits that fracture your attention and leave you feeling scattered. Next, take steps to gradually wean yourself off those patterns. Use website blockers and app limits, put your phone on sleep mode, and create guilt-free periods to go on a full digital detox. Do whatever you need to create consistent stretches of distraction-free mental breathing room. From there, it's about building up your focus stamina over time by setting a timer and intentionally concentrating on a single task, idea, book, or practice with full immersion for increasingly longer periods. 
The mental resistance will be intense at first after so much reconditioning to scattered thinking. But stick with it, and your attention muscle will start developing some much-needed endurance. Try experimenting with supplementary focus-enhancing tactics like listening to atmospheric music to raise your mental vibration. Use tools like the Pomodoro technique of intense 25-minute work periods followed by brief rest breaks, or try methods like philosophical journaling to really flex your capacity for linear, penetrating depths of concentration. No matter which concentration training techniques you use, the key is aligning some basic habits and environmental conditions to enable your mind's inherent powers of laser-like focus to start blazing through life's clutter. Create solid, predictable routines rather than just reactively riding built up of context shifts and busy work. Take control of what monopolizes your limited supply of attention. Because when you finally unlock the superpower of being able to direct heightened focused attention for longer stretches, everything elevates. Your comprehension abilities sharpen as you can linger on nuanced insights. Your creativity amplifies as you can hold multiple parallel thoughts more vividly. Your very experience of living grows richer, more dimensional, less superficial. The Stoics revered this form of profound concentration as perhaps the greatest of all virtues. Through it, we thrive as the lofty intellectual and spiritual beings we're capable of actualizing as, not the fragmented, distracted, semi-conscious trance walkers so many of us have resigned ourselves to being in modern times. So starting today, make the conscious choice to prioritize focus, not in a harsh, forced way, but through patient practice and lifestyle optimizations. Quiet the noise, sight, aim on one point, and pour your fullest powers of perception into living attended in a way the Stoics knew we humans were born for. Intelligence, wisdom, and greatness await. Conclusion At the end of the day, the ultimate goal of these Stoic techniques isn't just about appearing smarter than those around you. It's about something much more profound. Unlocking your fullest potential as an intelligent, wise, and flourishing human being. You see, the ancient Stoics understood that true intelligence goes far beyond just stockpiling facts or having a quick wit. It's about cultivating a mind that operates with clarity, nuance, self-awareness, and an openness to continuously evolving one's understanding of the world. By embracing these 11 techniques, from sitting with uncertainty to asking incisive questions to sharpening your memory to mastering strategic silence, you're effectively retraining your brain to shed its limitations and bad habits. You're optimizing your cognitive faculties to cut through surface-level distortions and zero in on deeper layers of truth. More than that, you're nurturing the virtues that the Stoics held sacrosanct. Humility, temperance, justice, courage, and more. You're fortifying the philosophical and psychological foundations for living with eudaimonia, that sense of thriving grounded in reason and virtue. So while appearing intellectually formidable and having a competitive edge is all well and good, the real victory lies in progressively actualizing more of your innate human potential on a day-to-day -day basis. It's about feeling vital, aware, and able to navigate life's inevitable complexities and challenges with agility and wisdom. Does it take work to imbue these stoic principles into your routines and mindset? Absolutely. Pushing past our instinctive tendencies for bias, assumption, and mindless distraction is no easy feat in our turbocharged modern world. But every bit of effort expended pays dividends in the form of a richer interior life, a heightened sense of agency instead of being battered by life's whims and delusions, a clearer vision of reality that lets you make judicious choices in alignment with your values and reason. So if you're ready to elevate your intelligence to a new level, to quite literally upgrade your mind's operating system for peak performance, then commit yourself to the timeless, stoic path. Be a humble, lifelong learner comfortable with uncertainty. Stay curious rather than judgmental. Listen more than you speak. Pay exquisite attention to the details. Think critically while respecting nuance and differing perspectives. In mastering these techniques and virtues, you master yourself and that is the highest and most rewarding form of intelligence any human being can aspire to. One that yields abiding wisdom, resilience, and eudaimonia. Remember the wise words of Stoic Marcus Aurelius, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength.
The journey may be arduous at times, but like all worthwhile endeavors, the rewards of striving to live up to the example set by those ancient Stoic greats are beyond measure. You have everything to gain, and not a single thing to lose, save your former limits. What could possibly be smarter than that?